Okay, it's your turn to talk to Vanessa yourself. We'll see how this goes. It's all live, guys. There's no editing. There's no anything. So she only can say so much about this season, but past seasons she can say things that are already shown. So just respect her on that. You guys have been fantastic. So here we go. Talk to Vanessa yourself. Now, where do you go on a podcast that you can talk to the cast member themselves? Go ahead. No calls. <laughs> <laughs> it's late. It's late. You guys had to do this very late for me, which I appreciate. So. Yeah, it's only 10 o'clock. They usually show the show here from 9 to 10 anyways. Very true. Okay, Honey's, so where is everyone? I yeah. guess I answered everything. Which... <laughs> Sometimes they don't even call me, you know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, we did it with Laird, and after a while they started calling in. Laird did a call in, and it was very good. Laird Niven. Love Laird. Yeah. Smart, smart guy he is. Yep, yep. A lot of questions about when they had them areas that they couldn't dig on. And now they got new radar and new sonic radars that they can go past the areas that are in red so they can continue on to dig past the areas that are in the danger zone, you know, Vanessa? Yep. Yeah, the technology they're bringing and looking into is really cool. Very interesting to see. Then another technology, they want to do a borehole or do it down 10X, and it makes a sonar image from the bottom up. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yep. All right from Australia, Iron. Did I got that phone number up there, guys? Don't be shy. Look what I do. Look what you guys make me do. <laughs> you make me do all this. You know what I mean? I need to really up my game next time. Like put more pictures on my walls. That's nah. pretty bare behind me. Now they got like green screen, green screens. Okay, here we go, Vanessa. Hello, you're talking to John and Vanessa. Who's calling, please? Uh, this is Erskine Cook from Mississippi. All right, hold on. Go ahead, Erson. Uh, so I have a question for Vanessa, please. I'm sorry I didn't get the first part of what you said. Do you think these guys will actually have any resolution to what's in the bottom of the hole by the end of this season or next, one way or the other? Um, it will be, we're always looking for answers and we're getting answers and it leads us to, you know, getting closer and closer. Um, ah, this Island has so many mysteries to it and I am just a small part of it, right? I am the money right. pit, but I'm not involved in the swamp or Smith's Cove. And I think they all tie together. So I think it's going to take all of us to be able to unlock all all of these, all of the island's mysteries. Okay, thank you for your call. Okay, keep them phone calls coming. Don't leave no voicemail. Just keep on trying to call. They got like three in a row there, Vanessa. Oh, you did say they do call. <laughs> Hello, you're talking live to John and Vanessa. What's your name, please? Hi. John, this is Jan Scorza. Hi, Vanessa. It's so nice to see you on the show. Um, I had one question. Um, when you are putting cans down and uh, the guys ask you to put them down deeper and you feel it's not safe, do you ever have to tell them no? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I think they did air last season when we were trying to drill and they wanted to do some more stuff on H8, and I was like, no, we, we have pushed it to the max. There's a safety concern here. We are we are done. Um, the boys are very the men. Uh, Rick, Marty, Craig, all of them are very very respectful of my knowledge and understanding of this, and um, they do look to me. And if if I say no, they 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 respect it and they understand that we're gonna have to find different means and methods to get to wherever they want to go. Okay, that's all I wanted to know. Okay, I thought I was wondering if anybody had the nerve to tell them no. Yeah. <laughs> I do. It's me. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Jan. All right. Keep them calls coming, Ashley. Vanessa, you're fantastic. Listen to. Have to say goodnight. Thank you so much. Very good, Ashley. Thanks, Ashley.
Like I said, don't leave no voicemail. Just keep on trying to call. One of these days, I got to get like a office phone, Vanessa. You put everybody on hold and then you can press the hold button. But I'm just a small guy here. I'm just a fan of the show. I'm not no uh, TV producer. You know what I mean? <laughs> And I just tell everyone I'm just a driller, so I'm not yeah. quite sure what I'm doing either. So. You're just a driller. I'm just a fan with uh, 70,000 friends, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> just a few. Hello, you're talking to Vanessa and John live. Who are you speaking? Hi. Hi, John. Hi, Vanessa. Hello. Hello. How are you? Doing good. How about yourself? Thank you. Good. So I just called in. I just came on the chat, so I'm not for sure what everybody's really talking about yet. I just got to the gym. Can you recap me on what's going on right now? We're just calling in to Vanessa, who's uh, the CEO of Rock Equipment that's on the show, the Curse of Oak Island, every Tuesday night for questions. Awesome. I know I... Yes, absolutely. So what do you think about Frog Island? Do you think that there's possibly any connection there to maybe it being there and instead of Oak Island? Oh, very interesting question. Um, I actually drink my coffee and stare at that island while sitting on Oak Island. Almost every morning I'm up there. Um, <laughs> That was one of my questions that I kind of asked the whole team when we were up there too. Like, you know, are we sure we got the right island? Because when you're up yep. there, there's, I think there's 300 islands in that yep. area. Yep. Uh, so there, there's a lot of them. But I think after all the research that they've done over the years, not just Rick and Marty, but the research before and all the things that have been found and encountered and unturned, um, there might be treasures all over those islands all up there, but there's definitely something that happened on this island and, uh, yeah, I think I think they might they're they're in the right location. Lo, right location. Yep, and like Vanessa, I tell people too, would you bury all your treasure all in one spot? Would you have all your cake and eat it too in one spot? They're, those people weren't that dumb a long time ago. So I don't think there's just one big hall. I think there's multiple things all over the place. Yeah. I'd love to go back in time and see it for myself. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for your call. Thank you. You got any more calls coming in? I know there was three or four again. We'll take a couple of more, Vanessa, then we'll call it a night. Sounds good. I don't want to tell you out here. <laughs> oh, well, what do you think when you first got a call about Oak Island? Tom Cook, what do you think when you first got the call about Oak Island? Well, this is what I was talking about that earlier is that I, I I'm embarrassed to admit I ignored it for six months. <laughs> yeah. And then, then I had to get educated and that my friend in the industry told me they need my equipment. So I decided it wasn't just, you know, spoof. It was something real and we had to get involved. Yep. Yep. People don't realize how long it takes to get things in motion, you know, on a, even a regular project, the things, that you have to do, you know what I mean? They think I just turn this thing on and turn this button on and it's all go, you know what I mean? They don't see the backstory of everything that has to go on. They just see the end result, you know what I mean? Yes, yes. You have no idea that we are blowing each other up in email all day trying to figure this out since I don't know oh, what I'm doing. <laughs> Lord, that's, that's when I said, that's when I said, just call me, Vanessa. I can't type anymore. <laughs> Hello, you're talking to John and Vanessa live. Who's calling, please? Hi, my name's Steve. I'm from British Columbia, Canada. Um, kind of got one question. Okay. What what goes through your mind when you guys are pulling up the amount of wood from inside of these cans? It's just it's just crazy watching it on TV, and it's like there's timbers after timbers and after timbers, and it's there's definitely been some a lot of work around there. Yeah. Um, actually, personally, when I see all those timbers, I kind of get sad because I wish that we could excavate it in a way that I could see those timbers still intact. 
so that mm -hmm. I could understand exactly what structure it is. Uh, when we start pulling out those timbers, I, um, one, I'm amazed as you guys are that there's so mm -hmm. much wood and so much work done at such deep levels. Uh, but I really do wish that we could uh, almost spoon shovel this thing and archaeologically dig it out mm -hmm. and, and just be able to preserve everything and mm -hmm. see what the structures are because I'm, I'm very intrigued by them. Okay, thanks for your call. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right, we'll take one more. Last time when Larry was on, I said, I'll take a call. You got five seconds. I says, they can't even dial the phone in five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I said when we were texting back and forth. Then I said, just call me. I can't text no more. I can't type no more on this email stuff. <laughs> and I am like the world's fastest typer, so I feel yeah. bad for anyone who's yes, going back and forth with me. No, not me. Mm -mm. All right, guys. Because I know, I don't know how the phone gets tied up, who's getting busy signals or what, but one more call. And you'll be the last one. Scott Dilly, thanks for coming in. <laughs> Scott says, what will happen if you can't lift up what's there? Yeah. Oh, I think that's actually something we were encountering um this year and gotta find different means and methods or bigger crane <laughs>